so guys uh, welcome to this uh, particular video now what we're gonna do here is to work out these um, the uh, date see the way it looks like now last updated I think we'll have this in front and then have it exactly remember how we did it before all we had to do was put format you just put this arrow format and then you start typing the format so we need the R first then the minute okay the minute I think this is okay then we have dash then we have the day then we have the month and we have the year that's it I can refresh this so if you want to understand this more I think one more thing we can add is the AM or PM I think it should be AM or PM all right so 6 p.m. nine minutes after 6 p.m. on Wednesday February February what was the date so it should carry Wednesday February on. Wednesday small d so if you want to learn what I'm doing, you just need to Google date format in PHP. You'll see all uh, the different date formats, but um, that's basically how to do that. Okay, now we have um, 6 p.m. on Wednesday, 27 February 2019. Very beautiful. So we just need to copy exactly what we have here. Of course, there are many other formats. If you're wondering if there are better other ways to write it to your taste, you know what I mean, you just need to go go PHP uh, date format in PHP. So um, basically, we good 1 p.m. Uh, this period. I think this makes sense. And one more thing is um, maybe the general size is okay for you. For me, I would have preferred to reduce it a little. But but you know, it's all fine. It's all fine. Now, um, there is this description of the course. There's a about instructor. There are the tags. There are what will student learn and target students' requirements. Now, uh, we need to clear up the price, a discount price and the actual, actual price. We need to find a place to put it here. Where would be the perfect place to put price? I think um, it should be somewhere below here. All right. So, uh, we will go here and do a discount price actual price we just copy the two of them cut i'm removing it from here and i'm going all the way up I'm all the way up now where we're looking at the subtitle i think the subtitle should occupy a short percentage of the screen it should occupy coal Okay, I think this should have been MD. Call MD. Occupy is 8, okay. I doubt. But I'm thinking 6 should be okay. So that we can add the price in here. Look at what I mean. D plus. Of course, you can have your own design. Call MD. 6. Alright, so that the pricing can take the other 6. D and uh, we're good then paste I pasted this inside the second D so let's see what it looks so this looks like what I want a little like what I want I want the description the subtitle to come here all right while the, the pricing is somewhere here so this pricing, uh, we're going to have to do what we did before, where we had to cancel the actual price and uh, put the discount price. So the actual price right under the discount price. Okay, I think I should just copy this and paste here. So I've saved it just to go check it out and see what it looks like. 
and um, of course I don't want this uh, we don't need to tell people that it's the price once they see a dollar sign they're going to know straight up that it is the price so this will be gone once you see a dollar sign and um, because of that I don't think I actually need this all I just need is to drag this to this place delete delete okay so we're good R load beautiful now we can expand the size um, what could be a good size I think we could we may have to put it in a heading h3 let's see how big h3 is h3 Mm, starting to make sense um, h3 kind of makes sense otherwise we could just leave it to where it was I think I'll use span here using span kind of makes sense um, duplicate the line um, did I do that twice? Okay, I just duplicated the line. Copy this. Paste here. And um, there are many other things you can do. But I can temporarily separate this from here. Put a dollar sign here. Put a class here. Is it class style? Put a style here that says font size. Font size. Um, let's say 18. Let's see what 18 pixels font size will look like. Too big or too small? Yeah, it is too small. I would have put it at 30. Let's see what 38 looks like. Yeah, makes more sense now. All right makes a little more sense so i'll do the same thing here and um, for half the size put a dollar sign for half the size i'll do, put it at 18 18 and um font text decoration text decoration line true line dash true that's how you strike you make a strike through in a text let me put this here i'm trying to um, make sure that you can see the whole everything i'm doing all right so i'm writing an inline uh css reload uh beautiful so this is cancelled this is what it is now okay cool now the last thing we need to add is a pay button for someone who has not bought this course so how do we know if someone has bought this course we simply when when this page is opening we simply scan through the subscriptions pages uh, subscriptions records on the database to see if there's a record that exists that um, contains this guy's um, user ID we're gonna see it but let us see pay let us put the pay button first so we we have this now so I'm gonna put create a new layer here just a div div class uh, call md12 so it should occupy the full width right it's going to handle payment div beautiful so now we're going to do the payment the payment is going to be a link a href uh, we could get this link from our payment the, the pay button we should get it from our the uh the payment page or uh, the payment processor for instance if we are going to be using paypal we will have to go to paypal and paypal will give us this link if we are using which other one uh pay stack pay stack is what i'll be uh using uh for this but well, we have to go to pay stack and get this link but for now let us just um add the fancy link there class so the in class is where you do it but btn large lg large button that is what in color um green i think green makes sense what do you think 
uh, green is success, BTN success. That gives you a green button and you can say pay. Is it pay or purchase? buy cost? Which one is which one is better? Buy cost, pay, buy cost. Uh, you can figure that out. Uh, during your own time, but I want people to be able to buy a certain course buy course For a certain price buy course So this makes sense so far so there is a buy course here you can use another thing we can do is to actually put this by cost somewhere here or right underneath here I think that would have made sense right underneath here would have made perfect sense so there is this um, by cost button that we can put here buy now buy now makes sense by now oh so why is there this tiny little uh, margin which i don't want because it's a button so the immediate solution would be to remove this and uh, remove this then uh somehow put a br tag all right then uh let's try this first Okay, this kind of makes sense. Buy now, 80. So you can just design this in your own way, right? You can design this in your own way, but uh, this works for me. So I have to be a billionaire, and there's this course here, and then there's this. Uh, and um, where's the creator status, admin status? Created and modified. I think that's one thing that would have been here. So created and modified. Updated. If I copy the created and, and updated and, and I put it right here, what will happen? If I put both of them right here, what will happen? Reload. I want them to appear here because of the empty space. I think this makes better sense that both of them are here. At least it blocks the empty space okay so i think um you can take your time just do more better design i'm gonna remove this uh, back button and some of you might just be looking for it here it's not on this page it's on the page that calls this page this is show fields page right show fields is being imported into show blade so if you click on show blade you see that nothing much is there except that it is important show fields then underneath here is where you see that back button look at it see that back button um we don't need it save reload and it's done so um it is as safe we've run into an error of course because it's like we're not logged in again so it's complaining that um property of object it's good that you see how I resolve this issue. Okay, so this is the line. Look at this line is painted a little red or brownish. And this line simply is making a call to the uh, session. And um, if the user is logged out, this is going to have an issue. All right. So that is what I think is happening there now. The user is logged out. So the way to know is if we go to the home page we can tell if the user you see laravel has logged out that's why we're seeing login all right if we log in and get back to that page that error will not be there if we log right in and get back to that page if we go to courses and click on one course 
see the error is gone because we're logged in now so um, when you're writing your code you should be careful of this kind of problem where you're checking uh, the person that is logged in and you're not checking whether the person is even logged in at all you get you need to check whether somebody is even logged in at all all right so um, to do that we need to find where that potential problem is this is one place that we used it on line 47 and I think we used it somewhere else I think okay line 47 is okay so one way to do that is the person has to somebody has to be logged in first before the person is either this or that okay so I'll do if auth check the Laravel auth check will uh, confirm will return true if somebody is logged in all right then we can say and all of this grouped together all right so somebody has to be logged in if you are logged in and um, you are either this or you are either an admin or uh, the person that created the course that's why I put them in brackets so this must fulfill and at least one of these must fulfill so that's basic um, if else statement in programming so if you don't know it then uh, you may need to go back to some of your basics in programming so that makes sense now now I think what we can do is to log out and come back to this page let me copy this page um, just to test what we did sign out we are signed out now so let's try and visit that page and see whether it will throw an error no error see we're smart we're very very smart okay 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 so people can come to this course page without having to log in they see everything then they see a buy button and then when they click on the buy then other things can happen now i'm thinking because of the design that these two have to be under these two uh what do you think um if we come here what's what's those two category and uh, auto so we have created and here so we have um category and auto so if we copy it underneath where is it underneath this tool so we're going to paste underneath this tool now about the user you know we need to make it a link um okay lest we forget a href so that if you're looking at the username you can go to the users page and um, see all the other tutorials they have done users slash we copy exactly this paste here and then we change it to id so when the when this person clicks here it's gonna take the person to user slash this id so if i reload these two should come up here beautiful and why is this something is wrong with my code somewhere um here because i didn't close this and um i should have put something like that all right um something is still wrong ahref we pause this because this is changing color it's indicating that something is wrong but let's go oh yeah because i didn't do this and a question mark beautiful so that's uh, the importance of code coloring it helps you to see when you're making a mistake okay so now we can see the the author's name we can click on it go to the profile or we can see the the category you can click on it go to the profile or we can buy the course if i click on author name it takes me to the user's profile we're, we're still going to come back and fix the user's profile and make it looks good look good but for now i think um this is generally okay for the course all right so if we want to log in we'll click on login don't worry that this whole thing is scattered now uh, we're gonna fix it later it's just a design problem which i don't want to waste my time on for now but we will surely come back 
uh, fix it later or you too you can fix it in your own way so we're good we're good now in case you're wondering why it's always landing on a blank page is because we told it in our routes that the default route goes to home and we've not put anything in our home page no html at all look at what i'm talking about if we come to here this home.blade it's empty um, that's not the spelling of empty so you see empty that's it so we don't have anything yet there but uh, what i have in mind is to put user statistics inside it like when you log in you see that i've bought three courses i've I checked out 10 courses i am um, whatever whatever statistics like that you understand that's what i want to put inside so i hope um the whole thing makes sense so far and um we've basically done two steps in the course click here opens the course page you read through you decide if you want to buy then you click the buy but um we need we still need to integrate payments to make this to work now what we have to work on now is the users user profile and list of user page to do that i'll have to make myself an admin so that you can see this uh, we will integrate payment sometime uh towards the ending so um here Um, this has logged us out. I uh, need to re-log in. All right. Um, we find the Lara course, then we find users. Lara course. We find users and click on browse. Now the browse is going to. We're looking for role ID. Role. Uh, role ID. That's role ID four. So I want to make myself an admin. <coughs> change that i double clicked on that and change that for to one and i hit enter now i am an admin if i come to my platform and reload i'll see more um menu here all right so this is more menu beautiful so what we're gonna do is we're going to use coupon we're going to use um users all right just to work out the users page the normal thing we did in the other one we're going to remove all the all the things we don't need here but we will leave some for admin first for instance let's remove the password first that's users index so we go to users index users index our uh, index is important table so we'll go to table we'll still duplicate it but let's remove the more general things uh, that we don't need remember token should be out and password should be out okay so we remove remember token then we remove password so generally we don't want any other person to see this page so only admin can see this page there is a way to build that out which i will show you later on but um we don't need data of bit here and um do we need uh, first and last name i doubt i doubt we need first name last name j um date of birth we don't need those three first name and last name should go and the uh, date of birth should go so if we come here first name and last name should go then date of birth should go i hope you understand what i'm saying wh why i'm doing this the reason i'm doing that is so that um this place can contain the data we want to see the important data we want to see uh, all the other data can be when we click on this all right okay there's already name here dave there's a um, email there is a um, gender is this subscribed um we can fill this later but just know that this page the users will not see this page there is no reason the user should ever see this page all right except admins or moderators we don't want users to see list of other users why would they do that all right so view count like how many times somebody has viewed uh this user's uh, page let me show you an example role id so it's in the role id we don't have to put we have to put the role the role is admin moderator so we don't have to use a number so to do that i'll remove role id and put role 
and uh, in the row we're going to do row colon name the name is the field in the rows table right so but um it's gonna throw an error if we have not linked role to users in the model so let's refresh first um it's not saying anything because we have not told users model how it is related to role model role model that sounds cool like a role model okay so if we go to models we did something in courses before about user a course belongs to a user right the same thing a user belongs to a role so i'm going to copy this code go to user and uh, somewhere at the bottom paste it but i'll change it to role so i'll call this role and say uh, belongs to a user belongs to app models role this is app folder and models folder inside app folder then role the role uh, function and then we have to also reverse it that a role has many users so let's go reload um there is a problem column not found on non column roles related as we're close so it appears that somehow a mistake slips through in the roles table we did not have a deleted at you see there's created and updated but there's no deleted that how did it happen uh, but we're gonna have to do that at updated that we're going to add it make it a timestamp right make it nullable so just click go here so deleted that it's gonna be a timestamp um, timestamp can be really hard to find out just I'm just gonna type T on my keyboard T T till it finds timestamp we found it hit enter and we're good and what is is it not able yes it is nullable and then i hit save here's the save button save if i refresh now that error should be gone but our editing has not completed remember every time you save something in the database you change something in the database you need to go and change it to in the migration so we'll go to database migration on the role roles migration so the reason why we are changing it in roles migration is just out of um, out of good habits all right if you don't change it nothing will happen it's just that in case we ever have to run um, PHP artisan migrate again next time that error will not be there that's why we're changing it here not that um, we can't proceed without it so we're gonna do table soft deletes that's how you add that deleted at field soft deletes okay we're good but it seems we have a problem and that problem is that it's still not showing yet we're supposed to write a name here so let's debug that go to users table row a user belongs to a row yeah okay where are we where did we write it i'm trying to find that place we wrote it it's easy to get lost in the midst of files okay let me just go trace it back so we had it in resources users so we are in resources and under resources we are in users and we're in table so this is where we are and we're trying to print out user role name yeah this should work so why is it not working So the reason it's not working it's obvious we have not actually created any roles that has names so 
we can come here and click on insert insert so the first row we want to insert the name you leave this field empty because this um, database management of uh, php admin automatically increments put the numbers here so the first role is admin and uh, we don't need all this then the second role is a moderator or whatever staff that works with the admin if we click go we can now create two more so just to show you if we refresh now the name should appear reload keep your eye here and right there you see admin moderator then the third one should be like instructor and the fourth one should be um students instructor students i think it should have been plural instructors okay so if we refresh now we will be good you see email verify that so this tells us when the email when the user verified their email so we have email verified our view count how many times they have viewed the profile uh, which means if we click on this now to view this profile by the time we're back this view count will increase to two let's go confirm because i remember we did it somewhere before i'm refreshing to increase it to three uh who get who knows if we did it before so for a load now uh, yeah see we, we we did it in the beginning of this course there's no way you would have skipped it we wrote a small code that automatically increases a uh, view counts so now we know how many times this profile has been viewed other things we don't know is who viewed this profile those things are like secondary we can code it once you open a profile it tracks that you have already viewed this profile all right okay so we're good so far now what i want to do is to make this email a link so that uh, our name email i think email works so that you, people can click on this email to go view instead of just clicking here so we go to this table we find that link that's this one copy it then we come to where email is paste it and then copy the email then we can remove that it's a button this class button thingy we remove it then um, the whole icon thingy we remove it we don't need an icon what's happening okay so this is what we're left with just a link and then I can paste the email here so that the email becomes a link if we reload now the email becomes a link remember you can use CSS to change the color of your links like I don't like this color but I don't have time to go and change it so somebody clicks here it simply takes you to the user view page so the next thing we're going to fix is this page as you can see this page is a total mess so this page is in users show all right this is the page everybody gets to see show um show fields the first thing we're going to delete is the password nobody ever needs to see that mangled up password nobody and then there is the token that no remember token nobody needs to see it is just for internal use by laravel now we got two of them out only admin needs to see deleted that in case somebody deletes their profile only admin needs to see when it was deleted um let's say only admin let me even write the code um the code is simple it just says that if since the user profile can be seen from outside the uh, login we can say if this user is logged in out check if user is logged in and then every other thing we're writing and the logged in user of the user that is logged in um, role ID is less than three so the reason I removed that previous bracket is because is this just one condition if we had another condition here like or oh, whatever whatever I'll put it in brackets so hit enter 
and if all right so um created that instead of created that we're going to call it join so we can see when you're joined and um of course we're gonna do what we did the other time where we just made some things like um call md12 not 12 12 is too broad i think 6 is okay call md6 6 6, six. Um, I think this makes a little sense as you will soon find out uh, we don't need the ID A reload you see this is the user's profile the first name the email the last name the gender the date of birth and so on so uh, we're gonna have to hide date of birth there are some things only the owner of this platform can see and one of them is date of birth only the owner of this profile can see date of birth so we're gonna put it at the bottom here let's do the kind of thing we did here uh, date of birth can only be seen by owner if user ID ID is equal to user ID. So if the currently logged in person is equal to this, then they can see date of birth. Uh, or if they are an admin. So I, I want to put. Okay, so we can. And, and so uh, we can say all. Put a bracket here and then do an all and copy this. So, admin also, whatever the owner of this profile can see, admin should be able to see that also. So, date of birth only admin can see it. The last time this profile was modified, yeah, only the owner can see it. Last, last updated. and um the role so we've learned how to do this we just need to do name so the role instead of role like it's role so um joined uh, view counts that's how many people has viewed have viewed this profile we'll find a way to sneak it in somewhere a uh, profile view I think it should just be like something here profile viewed X times text muted our maybe this should be 12 um unexpected this which line on line 71 there's an error on line 71 oh i think i found the error we had one arrow line 71 um larva can be pretty confusing when it comes to some of this naming so i'm sure it's not 71 so here we needed an extra that's it Oops. yeah we needed to like it. if i reload now it should be fine 
that it provide build six times this is cool another thing is to we can move it text right i think it's text right that you can use to move it so um to really work on this kind of platform you know your bootstrap very well like i said i have bootstrap uh, you see it's now on the right provide build seven. build seven times all right um we're gonna remove this back button and you remember how we do that in users we go to show show and this is the back button i'm going to delete this line and um, save and refresh it will be gone and um, we're just going to make sure that the rest is okay it's subscribed only admin should be able to see it's subscribed so we'll go to show filter blade and look for is subscribed Uh, profile viewed subscribed okay I'll email verify that only admin should be able to see this too so admin can see when it was deleted email verify that and um, okay I think we're good we reload joined all right we need to fix joined so when we look at um, joined it's format I hope you remember how we do the format the format is R R minutes a, we put dash day month year and that sorts our problem uh, we love that but that kind of sorts our problem by 11 26 a.m okay so we continue so the next thing we're going to do which we forgot to do in the other one uh in when we were working on courses we'll go back and do that is to add all the uh, other related tables for instance uh, we need to know all the um, courses this user created right beautiful and also um, going forward we also need to know all the courses this user has bought or subscribed to so in that respect I will just um we'll start with all the courses this user has so if we go here we'll see how it's show fields impo is imported we'll do the same thing oops copy paste and import courses so courses so we're gonna do courses table just go to the courses table and show us the table for all the courses all right we're still going to do something but let's just um see what happened if we have not linked the user table to the model of courses uh, the user model to the uh, courses model we're going to get this error see undefined variable courses yes of course that's because we didn't link it now we're going to go to um there are many ways you can do what, what um, I'm about to do now, but um, I would like to do it this way just for simplicity purpose. So go to app controllers. We're going to use as um, function for show and we're going to um, download all the courses that this user took. That's what we're trying to do here. We go to users, user controller, then show. Look at show. This function is what handles this page, user slash the user ID. That's the function that handles it. Okay, so we want to here, right here, go to the database and fetch all the courses taken by this user and pass it along here, all right? So let's start with from the back for no reason. Duplicate this, delete this, and pass it along. I'm going to do courses. Courses. 
all right so we're not just passing the user details we're passing the courses the user took now we have to go to the database and download it so right here we go to we'll, we'll name it courses equal to course go to the courses database where the user id user underscore id is the id here once you find that get all of them this is beautiful so we're getting all the courses that this user has created okay courses this user created this is different from courses this user has subscribed to you understand because we need to consult a different table for that we need to construct consult the course user table to get courses this user has subscribed to all right but for now let's do this because of simplicity if we refresh now the our error should be gone and oh yeah the error we're having now is that we're using this model without importing it so every time you're going to make such a call you have to import it at the top of here so the way to import it is to say use go to app folder go to models folder and you find a file called course all right so that's how we import course if we refresh now we should be clean of errors and we're good see um how to be a billionaire that's cool so i think we should put a title here just to make everything fine we'll come here we put a title h2 h3 i don't know which one h2 courses uh h3 so we could call it my courses courses i created courses are created because we need to go ahead and do something else as we're going up forward courses we still need to put a tab here so that the person can see courses i i subscribe to or bought courses i created all right so but for now this is what i want to leave it as uh, my courses uh my courses okay the other one could be my subscriptions okay my courses so uh using bootstrap we can position this in the center plus text center uh my courses for now all right um refreshing and surprise surprise it didn't go to the center the reason it didn't go is because this does not occupy the full width so we can say call mb tool so that this will stretch the full width of the screen which uh, then this will put uh, the courses in the center all right then we go to see my courses cool all right i think um we done basically on this we will be back later on when we're working on subscriptions to add the subscriptions here but we need to quickly get back to courses uh, courses course categories courses my courses no so why do we have courses twice i think i have to delete one for now so to do that we have to go to layouts menu i'll delete my courses i'll delete my courses Uh, instead I'll comment it out reload my courses should be gone so we just have courses subscriptions okay course category so click on courses uh, we'll select a course now there are several things we need to know about this course right from here at the bottom we need to know um, how many um, users are subscribed to this course all right we need to know how many users are subscribed to this course and then in users table we need to know how many courses this user has subscribed to 
Now to do that, we have to look at a unique table that we have. And that unique table is the, if we go to the model, if we go to app, then we'll go to models. There is a unique model called cost user we created. So the cost user model is supposed to be that joint table between the model and the, the cost user cast. All right, so this is where this is the joint table. Now we're going to use Laravel um, methodology to join <clears throat> to put some code here that will join the cost and the user table very easily. Now to do that, um, I would like to take you to Laravel platform. Okay, on the under the documentations, we come to eloquent, and we're looking at relationships. Now the kind of relationship we're looking at is many to many relationship all right so this is it defining relationship many to many if we click on it um, you can take your time and read out here what this basically defines uh, a many to many relationship between a user and roles table so the very first step is to go to the user model and tell it how it belongs to course so a user belongs to many courses So I think we've done something similar to that. Uh, so a user belongs to many courses, all right? A user belongs to many courses. So we're going to call it courses of models course. OK, so we do the same thing for course, all right? We have to go tell courses that it belongs to many users. So now, um, now you have to see uh, where we run into the first issue because we've already had this that says it's just a belong to instead of belong to. So this is the relationship it has with one user, but it can have a different relationship with many users. So we have users, it belongs to many app models user okay now um, we have this so the thing is you should just take your time read through this so you understand much better how it works but now we can start doing really nice stuff like um, pulling up all the list of users that have subscribed so but I want to quickly show you what the table looks like so you just just to refresh your memory we have course user this table we built it to uh, tell us which user subscribed to which course that's just what the table exists for it's just for keeping records we don't even need an interface for it we don't need html for it you understand because uh, we just display it on the courses page so i think the first thing we need to do is to manually create a record in our subscriptions table so i'll go to subscriptions table and create a record because if there is no record it doesn't matter what we do we wouldn't be able to see anything here all right so we need to see a record okay so here we'll go to course yeah course user i'll just click on insert let us say here that user one uh is subscribed to course one and then uh paid date let's say the person paid on this date and um, expiry date, let's say the expiry date is on the, oops, I think this is too much, let's do much, three, beautiful, and um, what else, date it was created, let's say it was created today, and um, not else, status, it's active, all right, we can just do the same thing here. User one, subscribe to course two, and uh, pay date. We'll just choose a date. Expiry date sometime in the future. Sometime in the future. And uh, what else? Paid amount. Okay, yeah, paid amount. Let's say pay three thousand whatever currency. 
it amounts 7,000 whatever currency. And what else? Plan. Uh, we can leave others. Mm. So far, so good. Created at today. Expiry, deleted at status. Okay, go. Uh, value for column user account add flow. Incorrect integer value, okay. The it's complaining about this that we must we should make this user account ID null. We should make it null. I'll just put something here for now. User account ID. But um I'll make it null shortly. So it has gone. So I'll come to structure and make user account ID null. This should be null level. I don't know why it was not null level. In fact the two of them. The two of them should be null level. Yeah, expiry date. Expiry date should be null level. Paid date should be null level. Plan. Status. I report null. Okay, so now we're going to go to change. In change, we're just going to enable all the null. So before I submit them, I want to go change this in the uh, database, database migrations. So go to migration for course user, migrations, database, migrations. We're looking for course user table, course user table, course user table. Remember that course user table is just another name for subscriptions table, okay? So we are looking for... Um, Cost ID, cost ID should be null level. And the reason, in case you don't understand, is uh, the person could be subscribing to a course, or they could be subscribing to an, another user. That's why we did that. And I think this should also carry the category. I don't know why we didn't do it, but it should have category. In case we, in the future, want people to be able to subscribe to category or full user account. For this course, or this tutorial, we'll just be covering only course ID. Alright? But it's good that we have category ID here. Save. What else is nullable? I think some of these other expiry date is nullable. If you do lifetime subscription, paid date is nullable. The reason it's nullable is that so that we can we can subscribe people without them paying first while they are processing the payment. We've already subscribed them. That's why. Okay, so uh, we click save. And we're good. So we now have two records. Now we can start working with it. First of all, we have to import the table. Okay, so we're going to import the table. We go to... Um, Cost, cost show. So we go to resources and views. We're looking for courses table. Courses. We're looking for show. Show the blade. Right here, courses have show the blade. We have to import user, right? Say users show fields, I think. Yeah, so this shows us the list of users that are subscribed to this course. But if we refresh now, we have an error. It's saying that undefined variable user. Um, yeah, because we've not linked it correctly. So it's showing on show fields, users show fields on um, profile build. Okay, no, not show fields. We're linking the wrong. We're supposed to link users table. Table is the list of users. So we're going to use us folder linking the list, the table that displays the list of users. Let's reload and see. Okay, now we have a different error. It says undefined variable users. So if we come here, we will see that um, it's not just seeing the variable at all. The reason is that we've not done what we are due diligence in 
in app HTTP controllers. Now we're going to course. We're going to course controller and we're going to show show function. I'm scrolling through to look for show function on the course controller. And this is it. So this place, what this function does is go to fetch the course details using the ID that was passed in. This ID is this number you're seeing here. So uh, number one is passed in. It goes to the database, fetches the details of course number one, checks if um, it uh, that course actually exists, whether it returned empty. If it returned empty, to cancel and re redirect back with an error. Otherwise, it will open the course page. Now we need to let it know that it should also fetch the not just course. It should fetch uh, the user's details. Now, if we get back to Laravel under many to many, you will see how to retrieve details of the other table. I'm looking for it. So, this is how to retain retrieve details. So, you're going to call that function. So, Laravel simply says, Hey, you're just going to define a variable and then make a call to the database as usual but you need to attach the function that you created in the model this rows function is what we created in the model remember uh, the models that we have course so here we created a, a function called users now we're going to attach it we're going to make a call to the database and attach it all right so let's see how this goes I'm lost right now looking for the file I opened last. Look at it. Okay, so we found the course exists. Now let's go to the database. Let's paste what we have here. Or maybe I should type it directly for you. So we're going to the database. Let's call it users. We're going to the database, uh, the table, the course table, and we are looking for where the id is the id that was brought in all right then we attach users to it you see see how it's making sense now we attach users to it we now say get all this is this get function basically says get the list if you wanted to find only one item you tell it um uh, just fine all right so this and then we have to pass it to the view as the view is loading it's passing this uh, variable we need to pass this one too we'll come back and uh, refactor this code let it just work first so uh, you see i've duplicated it then i'll change this i'll do cost i think we have what we're looking for now so now let's go and refresh our page and uh, the error should be done. And um, it is saying call to undefined method users. So why is users undefined? Users is not undefined. Okay, I think what's happening here is simple. Um, you can't attach this kind of you can't chain it's called chain you can't chain this kind of function on a where method it has to be find let me change it to find now you'll see so if we reload now you see it's gone now if we scroll this is the user page all right if we scroll to the bottom we will see the the list of users that are subscribed you see uh, view counts 19 this profile has been viewed 19 times this is the user but um our larvae has logged us out like i said i'll sort this problem of uh, constant logging out later on um login and we get right back to courses so we we'll see the first course now and uh, what we see at the bottom is list of the user that is subscribed now what we're going to do is what we did the other time of course put a title above it and uh, we're going to work out some of these links some of these need to be removed 
Okay, because um, this table is the same table that admin sees when admin clicks on users. Look at what happened. When admin clicks on users, this is the same table. So we don't want it to be the same table. We want to remove some fields, all right, so that um, the the owner cannot see all the fields that admin is able to see. So we have to duplicate this table. So if we go to resources, views, we go to users, then under users, there is a table we're looking for. We have fields, all right? This is table. I'll copy it and click on users and paste. So it has renamed itself, all right? Now I'm going to call one admin. Uh, I'm just going to call it user, rename, table user, call it table user, dot blade. I think it makes sense this way, table user dot blade. So when we come back to where we attached it under courses, course, and we, oops, what am I doing? Okay, yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. So courses show blade, you see, instead of importing table, we have importing table user. So what it just did is we now have a different table we can work with. Now I can go into table user and remove some things. I don't need email verify that. I don't need it subscribed. All right. I don't think I need it subscribed. The gender is okay. The view count. We don't need the view count. We don't need the role. We don't need to know the role of the person. Email, whether they are, they are verified, their email is not your concern as a normal user is subscribed um, could be different from paid subscribe paid do we really need that I don't think so okay um, that's it I think one thing we could have is the paid amount they paid uh, let's say whether we are taking it out we're not checking the amount the user paid the cost user the amount they paid for the subscription I don't think so. I think we need to actually track it. We need to track the paid amount. Yeah, we have it, of course. The paid amount, what we don't have is paid dates. Which date did they pay? We don't have it here. Okay, paid date, we have it. This is beautiful. So I think what we should track instead is paid amount. So I'm going to say paid amount, amount they paid. So somewhere we removed the view count, email verified is subscribed, we removed role too. So I'm just going to say, um, so there's a way to actually uh, pull out what you're looking for. All right. In the pivot table in Laravel. So if you go to this Laravel page where they had many to many, and if you keep reading down, you'll see how to pull out. It's called pivot. We scroll down. You see pivot. All right. Now we're working with row. Um, I hope you understand what's happening. We have users table. We have courses table. Two different tables. All right. Now we have a join table in between that we call course user. All right. So what's happening here is that we're able to retrieve with this we're able to retrieve the content in the users table but what we want to retrieve now is the content in the course user table which is the join table this particular table we want to retrieve these fields so the way to do it in laravel is that you have to add this pivot all right so we have to add pivot i call it pivot but some other people might be calling it pivot i think that's the way americans call it pivot all right so we call it the pivot table so this pivot table, we, okay, we're pivoting to that join table and the table we're looking for is paid amount. Paid amount. That's the field we're looking for. So let's go check out. I'll put a dollar sign here so we can track it. Let's go check out what's happening right here. Reload. Okay, not on this. I think it's on um, process. So refresh. And at the bottom, you see there is. Did we have any paid amounts? I doubt. For user one, paid amount. I think we entered a paid amount. Let's see on browse. 
so we scroll to pay the amount we are we have so why is it not displaying it is not displaying because okay of course there is just a little adjustment we need to make all right but before for this to work right so but before this works there is something i just want to take you back a little if you come to course you will notice that we made another call while i was doing this you would have observed like i told you i'll come back and refract all right we made another call to the courses data database and guess what we're doing we're finding all the courses again just as we already did here so you don't do this in programming you don't repeat yourself in programming and then we're now chaining users all right but we've already told it in the model that hey you're connected to users so this entire line is not needed now why i did this is just to show you the other way to do that all right in case you run into problem any day but we don't really need this whole line since this one is already making the call and according to our specification in the model about the relationship it will intelligently go and fetch the users all right so we, which means also if we are smart enough we don't need to pass the users to into the view since this course this course variable contains users it contains users like this all right that users function is contained here so it, we can access it by using this arrow okay so one thing we can do is pass the course into the view then when we get to the, when we get to the view um when we get to the view here that we're doing a for each to um, display all users we're going to do course users you see course users now what it means is it's simple uh it will just do exactly the same thing course users as user it's going to do exactly the same thing and this is supposed to work now but for something in the model let's get back to the model let me show you something there is a way lot of things by default so in the model course while we're specifying this this model automatically just takes only two fields with it all right let me show you what i mean and let me take you just a little deeper to explain this so you understand so if we come here and do dd in case your a variable is messing up in in laravel you use dd to see what the content is so if i come here and reload it's going to throw a black page that shows me the data that is coming in so if we go to somewhere around original i think original attributes uh nope original should have it on original um what i what i am looking for is not um available here instead it is available in what we just deleted i'm just going to do this and um yeah don't worry we'll be back so it's available here if we do dd users all right if we do dd users let me show you what will happen if we reload okay beautiful now so if we go to user and uh, we look at original okay we we'll see that at the bottom is giving us all the things in user stable but at the bottom it's also containing the id you see pivot underscore course id pivot underscore user id it's telling us it's containing two fields from the pivot table let me show you another example if we come on relations and look at pivots let's see what's in pivot the only two keys it's containing the only two fields is course id and user id but in reality when we go to a pivot table we will see that this pivot table has so many fields but um laravel is only picking only two all right so if we want it to pick more we will have to go to the database to so the um the model right here while we are calling it we're gonna do with pivots then we start stating the fields that we want it to contain first one i want it to contain is paid amount I think I should bring this down. Enter without pressing space. You press enter without pressing space. Bring this down too. And I can duplicate as much as I want. 
Okay, now I can start looking at fields I want. Paid date, expiry date. Paid date. Expiry. Expiry underscore date. So depending on how many fields you want it to always pull out uh, at once, uh, there is plan, there is um, paid amount, there is plan. And uh, what else do we need? Created at, I think created at should be there too. Let us know the date that um, the person subscribed. And what else do we need? User account ID. user account id category id user account ID. so we are chaining all this now if you're wondering where i got this from uh the laravel documentation clearly states it i think i should just search with pivot look at it so as you're chaining it you chain with pivot so you can start mentioning the columns so we're gonna try right now okay we're gonna try right now uh let's just refresh first uh, i'm going to have to remove this dd category id Course user. Why is it looking for category ID? Do we have category ID here? Uh, I don't think so. Obviously, it's looking for category ID because some minutes ago we went to our categories uh, uh, database uh, migration and added category ID. We added it in the migration. Um, this is what I mean. On the database migrations, on the course course user we added this extra field but we didn't add it in the database itself so we didn't come here to add extra field I would have said um, go just to add an extra field to so category ID 11 can it be null? yes it can be null then I click save if we refresh now, the error is gone and it's now showing the time, the uh, amount. So very beautifully, now we're going to just clean up what we have. Uh, the first step in cleaning up is to identify what you need to remove. All right. So here, I'm just going to drag this. So this is the last section of this video. So right here. Uh, we're passing users in, we remove the users and remove this. So we're just passing only course. So if I go to the table that is displaying them, I'll just do course. And this should work, reload. Uh, works perfectly. So I know now you now understand how it works. So we're just going to have to put a title here. The title was just say um, the title of where we're getting it from from the course course show blade. So we're calling this. We're just gonna do what we did for H three. The H three class. The class will be uh, co md twelve. Then we can I'll have to do text center. We will still change this later when we start putting tabs. Uh, but it's okay. We can just do uh, subscribers. All right. As beautiful as it seems, we're all good. We're all good. So just one more thing, table user, because I don't like the way the user table is spread out. We could go to users, table user. I would have loved to call that table course, but it's okay, it's all right. So here in the table, I want to uh, say that the class should be um, call MD12. I want it to stretch forth just for design sake. 
it didn't and i wouldn't waste my time on this looking why it didn't stretch um there is a bootstrap class for that i think there's a bootstrap class for, for that so the special bootstrap way to do that is to uh, remove the table responsive class here from here and put it in a separate div above div class table responsive and then close the div then come to the bottom and um, close the div so this way as expected you see now works so if you want the table to spread uh, depending on the version of bootstrap all right depending on the version of bootstrap normal version of bootstrap table responsive inside the table element should work but um, in some versions of bootstrap bootstrap 4 alpha bootstrap 4 beta whatever uh, you might have to put it in a separate div all right thank you very much see you in the next video